video is just about how you write half equations. So if you've already predicted what's going to be attracted to each of the cathode and the anode, then what you do next to get that half equation right. These are the examples that we're going to start with today. I've got three cations, positive ions, that could be attracted to the cathode. And at the cathode, I normally get metals or hydrogen sometimes, but normally metals. What always happens at the cathode is reduction. So you can remember the shortening red cat to remember that reduction always happens at the cathode. Let's have a look through these examples and try to predict the products that are going to be made here. So Cu2 plus will turn into its metallic form, which is just copper, Cu. Ag plus will turn into its metallic form, which is just Ag. And H plus will turn into hydrogen gas, which has the formula H2. Don't forget the hydrogen is diatomic, so you need to add that little two there. The first step in work working out your half equation is to balance the atoms on both sides of your equation. So here, the copper, I've got one copper on the left, one on the right, it's all balanced. For the Ag, one Ag on the left, one Ag on the right, all balanced. The bottom one, however, I've got one H plus on the left, so one hydrogen, and I've got two hydrogens on the right. So that means I need to add a big two in front of that H plus to balance out those uh, atoms. The next step is to balance out the charges, and we do this using electrons. I'm going to show you the top one, and then you're going to have a go at the other two on your own. So what you've got here is the copper, 2 plus, has a charge of plus 2. So that means that the left-hand side has a charge of plus 2. The right-hand side has no charge at all because the copper has no charge. So there's a disparity in the charges on both sides of the arrow. The way we fix this is by adding electrons to make both sides the same number. So if I add electrons to the left and I add two of them, they're negatively charged. So that means that overall, the left-hand side of the arrow now has a zero charge and balances out with the right. I'd like you to pause the video here and have a go at the other two. So nice and simply, the Ag has one plus on the left, zero on the right, so that means one electron is needed. For the bottom one, don't forget that because you've got two H pluses, that means the charge is plus two. So I still need two electrons there to reduce those H pluses to make my hydrogen gas. Let's have a quick look at what happens when they're anions rather than cations. So these are attracted to the anode. At the anode, you normally have non-metals being attracted there, and they produce diatomic gases. Oxidation always happens at the anode, so you can remember that as anox. The oxidation always happens at the anode. So these are my three examples that we're going to have a look at today. Um, for the Cl minus one, it's going to produce its elemental form of chlorine, which exists as Cl2. Remember, normally diatomic gas is being made. O2 minus turns into O2. And OH minus is a little bit tricky, but it turns into water and O2. Let's balance out the atoms like we would do normally. So the first one, there's one chlorine on the left and two on the right. So I need to balance that out by adding a big two in front of my chloride ions. So now I've got two on both sides. For the second one, it's exactly the same. There's one oxygen on the left, but two on the right. So let's add the big two. And for the last one, it's a bit tricky to balance, but if you add two waters, then that means that you require four OH minuses to balance it out. The hard part is knowing how many electrons to add and which side to add them to. So in the top one, you've got a two minus charge due to those chloride ions on the left. And on the right hand side, I've got a charge of zero because chlorine has no charge. Now to balance these out, I need to add negatives. So the only way I can do that is by adding the negatives to the right hand side. And if I add two of them, you can see that both of the sides are now equal. Both have a charge of two minus. Now some of my students think you have to try and get them both to be zero, but that's not true. You just have to get both the charges on each side to be the same. So in the top one, you've got both of them being two minus. 
The next one, you have four minus due to the two oxygen two minuses. So I need to add four electrons on the right hand side to balance that out. For the bottom one, it's exactly the same. I've got a four minus charge on the left, so that must mean I now need four electrons on the right to balance out those charges. That's all for how to balance half equations. Uh, check out the other videos in this section to see more examples of how to use these in actual electrolysis situations.